Historic preservation means many things to many people, but almost everyone agrees it's important. It's easy to point to Main Street when you think about our history, but there's more to consider. Neighborhood designations, a building's age, its location, its architect and style are all important factors. Some of those who've been involved with Littleton's historic preservation movement know the story best, and they want to share their story with you. Littleton began as an agricultural community in the 1860s. The Platte River Valley provided fertile growing ground for fruits, vegetables, and grains. If you visited Littleton in the 1890s, you would have seen a countryside dotted with farms. And at the center of the community, you would have found the J.D. Hill General Store and the Rough and Ready Mill. Around the corner, a main street was developing with businesses that, at that time, primarily served the needs of the agricultural community. At the other end of Main Street were two rail depots, one for the Rio Grande and the other for the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe line. Littleton remains a town rich with buildings from the past and together these buildings tell the story of how Littleton began as an agricultural community, grew into a small town and finally to the vibrant city we have today. Several buildings from Littleton's earliest days still stand. The J.D. Hill General Store, Littleton's first general store, we know it now as the home of the gift store natural surroundings. The Abbott Building on Main Street is another early building. It was built in 1890. The first several decades of the 20th century were a real period of growth for Littleton. Main Street became lined with new buildings that included a real mix of architectural styles. The Coors Building on Main Street was built in 1905 by Adolf Coors of the Colorado family of brewmasters. It's a great example of the early 20th century commercial style building. The Bachelet and Lilly buildings are also good examples of this era. The overhanging eaves and dental moldings give these buildings their historic character. Downtown Littleton has three architectural gems. We all know them, the Courthouse, Carnegie Library, and Town Hall. The courthouse was designed by J.J. Huttert and built in 1908 in the Mission Revival style. We're standing, in fact, in the courthouse right now, and today the courts are going on just as they used to a hundred years ago. The Carnegie Library and Town Hall were designed by the well-respected and one of the top architects in the West, J.J. B. Benedict. The 5600 block of Louthan Street is a great example of the type of housing being built in Littleton in the 1920s. These homes are built in the craftsman style, and although similar to one another, each one is unique in design. In 2002, the residents of this block approached the city about designating their homes as a historic district. City Council approved their request, and now these homes form Littleton's first and only residential historic district. Littleton had that classic, rural, small town look and feel, and that remained through the 1930s and 40s. But in the decades after World War II, this would all change. In the 1950s, many employers, particularly in the area of research and development and manufacturing, sought out larger tracts of land on which to build a campus. All in all, dozens of new employers moved into the area. This in turn generated the need for new housing for workers. Subdivision after subdivision was built. Many of these homes were ranch style and now make up the bulk of Littleton's housing stock. It may be hard for some of us to believe, but the post-war development is now reaching 50 years of age, the year at which buildings can be considered historic. Not all of our post-war development is historically significant or worthy of preservation, but this period of Littleton's history has also produced some real gems. For example, the Methodist Church on Daytura, built in 1958, with its dramatic roof line. The building known as the Law Center on Littleton Boulevard, which was designed by Eugene Sternberg in the international style. There's also a Eugene Sternberg Courthouse Professional Building, with its accordion roof and wonderful variety of materials. Across the street is a building designed by Eugene Groves in 1950, and it's in the art modern style. A wonderful example of great post-war residential architecture in Littleton is Arapahoe Hills neighborhood. Uh, 1950s and early 60s mid-century modern residential architecture and uh, open floor plans, low 
pitches on the roofs, lots of glass, walls of glass. The neighborhood is working on getting historic designation. Gaining historic designation would sort of lock this moment in time of architecture here. It's, it's so unique and rare in the Denver area. We're really proud of our historic buildings in Littleton because our history dates back to 1872. And that's when Richard Little took 18 blocks of his farm and he said he was going to plat out a town site and name it after himself. And some of our buildings date back to that time. Now, a hundred years later, in the 1970s, the city council decided it was time to set up a historic preservation program. And they did that. And they designated four buildings. And one of them is our former town hall building, our Carnegie Library building, and our two train depots. The Arapahoe County Courthouse was designated in 1998. This is a building that was built in 1908. Back in 1949, the county added an addition when they needed more space. And that addition was basically a brick box, which didn't go well with the original style. When the city bought the courthouse from the county, they demolished the addition as part of an interior and exterior renovation. And back in the 1990s, when Littleton celebrated its centennial year, a group of businessmen and bankers, citizens, got together and formed a Second Century Fund so that Littleton's historic buildings, which had lasted a hundred years, could last for another hundred years. And you'll see the name Second Century Fund on some of the plaques around town. And that's because the Second Century Fund was able to use money that came from the State Historic Fund to help get grants and renovate these buildings. After the city took on that role and Second Century Fund didn't need to do that, in 2000 it became Historic Littleton Inc., which is a membership organization open to anyone interested in historic preservation. The house behind me is one of the city's current historic preservation projects. The property in the house, known as the Bemis House, is owned by the city of Littleton. It was built in 1921 and was a long time home of Edward Bemis and his family. Edward Bemis is primarily known as the publisher of the Littleton Independent for over 47 years. He served as Arapahoe County Clerk and Deputy Treasurer, and also was the first president of the Littleton Planning Commission and the first president of the Littleton Historical Society. In 2005, City Council designated the house as a historic landmark. Over the years, the Bemis House has fallen into disrepair. The city will begin a restoration project that will stabilize the house and restore it to its original condition. The city has obtained a $200,000 grant from the State Historical Fund to assist with the cost of the project. Community members have also volunteered their time and resources to help with some of the restoration. Well, Littleton's Historic Preservation Board was designated by City Council as a group of appointed citizens to look out for the preservation of Littleton's historic culture and our to help enhance the sense of place here. Well, landmark designation is an, it's a, a really interesting and neat process because the way it's designed all over the country is that landmarking is done at a local level. So we designed that and our historic code was put together after reviewing many historic codes around the country to specifically fit the Littleton environment. There's a variety of things that make a building eligible for historic designation. One of them is the pure architecture of the building. If it represents a specific type of architecture that's, uh, that is unique to that building or unique to the character of the city, that's worthy. Uh, if a famous person lived there or if significant events happened in that building, uh, that would make it also eligible for designation. People may be motivated by a variety of factors. Commercially, there's a lot of data that shows that it enhances your rents, it enhances the success of your retailer, and having a group of commercial buildings in, a, in an area enhances the, the success of that entire area. And we, also, we have an incentive program that's unique to Littleton, where people can get financial incentives. We have a fund of cash for our Main Street Historic District, where people can get some assistance for architectural design or some of the actual physical work that happens on the building. We also have tax benefits where uh, there's no sales and use tax or the permit fees are waived. And we have parking benefits where 
commercial buildings, if they change their use, would normally be required to find parking consistent with the new use. Under designation, they do not have to do that. Well, if you would like to modify or alter your historic landmark, uh, you approach city staff and tell them what you plan to do. Then you come in for a certificate of appropriateness, which simply assures that the facade renovations that you're, you're wishing to do are compatible with the history of the building and its uses and the surrounding uses as well. Well, the board's had a lot of neat accomplishments over the years. I, th I think it's that our Main Street Historic District is probably the, the one thing that stands out the most because it's downtown Littleton's our heartbeat and it's really the, the, the central part of being in Littleton. And when people think of Littleton, they think of downtown. I've always wanted to open a candy shop and for as long as I've lived in Littleton, which has been over 20 years, I knew that when I opened it, it would be in downtown Littleton on Main Street. I chose downtown Littleton because every time I would come with my kids or my parents or friends, it kind of takes you back to a time when life was simpler. My vision for downtown Littleton is that it continues to grow with the historical character that it has and have a mix of restaurants, unique shops, and entertainment so that when parents come with their families, this is not just a place to drop in and out of, but it's an experience. The presence of the, the historic district in downtown Littleton um, added to the attractiveness of the building because we knew that as that historic district gained momentum, that other buildings would come in um, to the district and the facade renovations would be consistent with the quality renovation that we were anticipating. I think my personal and our corporate vision is that we would like to see downtown Littleton develop into a vibrant pedestrian commercial um, zone. Early in 2009, we uh, sponsored, co-sponsored with Historic Littleton Inc. and the Historic Preservation Board a series of three workshops entitled Historic Preservation, the True Grid of Historic Preservation. And these workshops were facilitated by Nori Winner, who is a, a planning consultant slash historic preservation planner in Boulder. And uh, we had about 100 people in attendance at each. And the purpose of these workshops was to get feedback from the community uh, regarding historic preservation, why it's important, um, answer any questions that they might have about historic preservation. Our consultant came back with a list of recommendations and uh, after those recommendations are reviewed by the board they'll go back to the people that participated and get their input before we do final. Some of those recommendations included um, incentives and benefits of, of being um, in a district or being landmarked. Uh, surveys, we need to survey more properties, more of them have become eligible. Um, education workshops uh, that we could do for both commercial and residential um, with the recommendations on what we do there. When people talk about Littleton, it's usually not long before they mention its physical character. Yes, we have great parks, wonderful quiet neighborhoods, but the historic character of this town is undeniably integral to Littleton's sense of place. The city's historic preservation program together with the owners of these properties, have worked together to preserve our heritage and we have the opportunity to continue this work for years to come. Historic buildings and sites remind us of how our community evolved and set us apart from other cities in Colorado and across the country. As the late Littleton Historical Museum director Bob McQuarrie said, people in Littleton see historic preservation not only as a means of saving buildings, but of identifying and holding a sense of place. If you'd like more information about the city's history and the historic preservation program, visit the Littleton History page on the city's website, the Littleton Museum, Bemis Library, contact Historic Littleton, Inc., or call the city's historic preservation planner at 303 795-3748.